Somebody there, praise the Lord. Let me hear a good stage voice. The Lord bless everyone in Jesus' name. Why don't you rise up on your feet? Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this moment. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for what you have done already. Thank you for what you are going to do. Thank you for open heavens. Oh, thank you for showers of blessing. We are asking Lord at this very moment. You manifest your power. You break every yoke. All the needs that are represented here. We are praying that you miraculously meet them in Jesus name. Glorify your own name. Exalt your own power. Bless everyone here. Everyone desiring salvation, healing, deliverance, miracle, breakthrough, will receive. No disappointment here today. Well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God has blessed you already. You can sit down. I'm reading from Psalm 34. In Psalm 34, verse 8. Here the psalmist himself said, but this praise God. The psalmist knew God. He knew the power of God. All the blessings you are looking for. He had been asking for the blessing of the Lord. And he received. Like you are going to receive. I said you received. Like everyone is going to receive. And with the testimony that he had. With the understanding he had. With the revelation he received. You know, calls and everyone. In Psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is a man that trusted in him. He's calling on everyone here today. He says, I have tasted. But I cannot taste for you. I have touched it. I cannot touch it for you. I have got it. I cannot get it for you. Come and taste it yourself. Come and experience it yourself. That's why it says, taste. And see that the Lord is good. He's calling on every soul to come and taste. Calling on every seeker to come and taste. Calling on everyone suffering to come and taste. Talk accordingly on everyone that is thirsty to come and take. He says, so taste and see. Discover it yourself. Know it for yourself. Experience it for yourself. And get the mighty power of God for yourself. And then you will see that the Lord is good. When you talk about salvation, it's good at saving us. You talk about healing, it's good at healing us. You talk about his deliverance, it's good in delivering us. You talk about having dominion and power. It's good in giving us dominion and power. You talk about solving our problems. It's very good at that. It's an expert in solving problems, in moving mountains, in breaking every yoke. He said, I got it. You can get it too. 
I tasted it. And you can taste it too. I feel it in my heart. And you can feel it in your heart too. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man. Now he talks about the individual. The man who wants to come and see the power of God. The man who wants to come and experience the power of God. He's talking about every individual. Every needy person. Everyone having something to solve. A mountain to move. Tears to dry. Problems to take away. Oh, things to overcome. He says, for well, that man, and you feel there's a need in your life, you can come and taste and see how good the Lord is as he talks about the goodness of God. The Lord Jesus Christ is the express image of the Almighty God. He came from heaven. He came to represent God. He came to show us God. He came to reveal God. He came to say you want something from God that all the people of God, here is the way. And so the Bible says that Jesus Christ was anointed of the Holy Ghost and anointed with power. He went about doing good, healing all. How many did he heal? Tell me out loud. He healed all. It's like he's going to heal you tonight. I am a candidate for miracle. I said I'm a candidate for miracle. Remember, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Everything the devil has done in your life. Tonight, the Lord Jesus is going to reverse it from your life. He will set you free. What are you? He will set you free. He will break every yoke in your life. He will destroy the works of the devil. Now you must pay attention. Because here is what you will do. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is that man, that woman. Blessed is the person there today that will put his trust in the Lord. If you trust the Lord tonight, you will not be disappointed. You cannot be disappointed. Something good must happen there before you go. I'm talking to you briefly on the personal taste of God's great power. Personal. Individual. Yourself mapped out. Personal taste of God's great power. What can that power do? That power will save you. Are you there? Let me see you there. He will save you tonight. That power can sanctify you. He'll make you holy. He'll make you righteous. He'll take that thing that is inside you. That is bending you the wrong way. He will straighten out your life today. I'm looking for the man I'm talking about. He will make you as straight as a ruler. Your life will be an improved life. Your life is going to be a straightforward life. All crookedness in your life, he will take away today. The power of the Lord today is able to heal you. 
Thank you. Thank God. We thank God. Today, you will be a specimen of a great miracle. The state of Basia said he was going to give you a testimony. He forgot because he had to go through those 22 nuggets of faith. Pay attention. I might be giving you the testimony at the time you are not expecting. But today, what happened in other places is going to happen in your life. Good things, great things, gracious things, glorious things, mighty things, what you have never heard of. Congratulations again. You will laugh. You will rejoice. Because God's power will be mightily manifested in your life today. Personal taste of God's great power. How does that happen? I, I want you to think about something. You want to drink water. And somebody is presenting water to you. He presents water to somebody. Let us say, mm -mm. thank you. Keep it to yourself. Then he presents it to you. Very quickly you take it. Why? Number one, because you have a desire. You say, my life must be better. Praise the Lord. Your life will become better today. Your body will become better today. Your family better today. Your future better today. You will never be the same again. Don't do like the one that says, uh -uh, I don't want. Don't do like the one that says, no, I don't want. Number one, desire. Number two, demand. You know, if you don't ask, you don't receive. If you fold your hand, if you close your mouth, if you shut your eyes, if you look back, and when people are praying, there is nothing coming from your heart. But thank God you will get something today. Number two, demand. That's those two things. That's your side. That is your side. You desire. You demand. Desire plus demand. It's going to produce something. Number three. Demonstration. Demonstration. Are you still there? I said, are you still there? Heaven wants to demonstrate. He wants to act out something in your life. You will be the ground of heaven falling upon you today. Am I right? Say amen. Number one, if you're going to taste, if you're going to see, if you're going to demand, if you're going to have demonstration, number one, the desire for its redemptive power. The desire for its redemptive power. Number two, the demand for its recovering power. I want to assure you today, you will recover. That sickness will not terminate your life. That problem will not end your life. The end has not come for you. There's a new beginning. You are going to start life all over again. Happy.
joyful, excited, wanting to leave, that suicide spirit will vanish away. The demand for his recovering power. Number three, the demonstration of his recreative power. Recreation in your life. New life has come. Happy life has come. Healthy life has come. A free life has come. A transparent life has come. A successful life has come. Thank God you are here today. Revival will come in your soul. Number one, the desire of his redemptive power. Uh, I know something, but those who don't have any desire, they don't move, they don't act, they don't run, they don't act, they just stay in one place there. It's like I'm um, going, 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 gone. It's like I don't want anything. Life is dull. Life is not exciting. And there's no desire in their heart. But today, wake up. I said wake up. New days are coming. A new life has come. Salvation has come. Something good has come. Wake up. Today will not be like yesterday. This coming week will not be like last week. This end of the year will not be like last year. This coming year, you will be the man of action. The man of success. The man with salvation. The man with the glory of God. Wake up and desire. Number one, the desire of his redemptive power. It, there was somebody. He heard about Jesus. That Jesus Christ was passing by. Look at Luke chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 1. Luke chapter 19 verse 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief of the, among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and he could not, and he could not, and he could not. Because of the press. Because it was little of stature. Many people want to see the Lord. And he could not. Because they are short. I'm not talking of physical. You are short. I am short. Look at heaven. How far? Very far. If you think you are tall. Raise up your hand. Touch heaven. Uh -uh. You are short. The Bible says all have seen and come short of the glory of God. You are far away from God. God is far away from you. He is holy. You are unholy. He is good. You are evil. And oil and water do not mix. You are far away like this man. But even though he was far away, he said, Jesus is here. This is my chance. Praise the Lord tonight. This is your chance. You are short, but you will see the Lord. You are sinful, but you will see the Lord. You are suffering, but you will see the Lord. You are sick, but you will see the Lord. 
you are tormented, but you will see the Lord. You are far away, but you will see the Lord. The man said, my shortness will not stop me. My stature will not stop me. My sin will not stop me. Nothing will stop you today. While the Lord is passing by and is touching other people and is saving other people, He will not pass you by. He will not pass me by. He will not pass me by. He will not pass me by. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others who are calling, do not pass me by. The man had a desire. And what did he do? Look at verse 4. He ran before. He ran before. He said, I will not miss my chance. Somebody there today, you will not miss your chance. You know the man, he was a rich man, a notorious man, a popular man. It was even on his uh, person they abused. He overlooked what they said or what they did. He ran. There are some people, they carry their dignity too far. They carry their self-respect too far. They carry their personal honor too far. And when Jesus wants to save them, he wants to heal them. He wants to change their lives. He wants to bring heaven in their soul. Their dignity stands against them. But this man said, My dignity will not hinder me. My stature and sight will not hinder me. My greatness will not hinder me. Nothing will hinder you today. You will see Jesus today. Give me an open state. Amen. He ran before. He climbed up a sycamore tree. All to see him. For he was to pass that way. And Jesus came to the place. Praise the Lord is coming to your place right there. He will not pass you by. I cannot begin to describe to you how much he loves you. How much he wants to favor you. How much he wants you to be with him in heaven. I cannot begin to tell you how much favor he wants to show you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that you so ever believes in him will not perish. You will not perish. Do you want to perish? You will not perish. Do you want to get to heaven? You will get there. That whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. If you are as bad as Zacchaeus, he will save you today. If you are as despised as Zacchaeus, he will save you today. If you are as dirty rich as Zacchaeus, dirty, dirty rich, dirty, yet he will save you today. And so Jesus said, Zacchaeus, hold on. Zacchaeus, they had never met. You think he doesn't know you. He knows you. 
He knows your name. He knows your need. He knows you are there tonight. If you are trying to hide anything, what are you hiding? He knows all that already. He knows your name. He's calling you by your name. Somebody there is getting saved today. Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today, I must. When somebody wants to do something, that no matter what it is, he will do it. He will not say, I may. I want to. I desire to. I may do it. No. When he wants to do something, something that must be done, something that will be done, something that no Satan can hinder, no something that your background cannot hinder, something that your bad character of the past cannot hinder. He says, I must. Heaven must come to your heart today. Salvation must come to your heart today. Grace must enter your life today. The goodness of God must enter into your life today. For today I must abide at thy house. Are you the person? Are you the man? Are you the woman? Salvation has come. And he made haste. And he came down. And he received him joyfully. That's what you do. Forget your past. Forsake your past. Overlook your past. Whatever your conscience has tried to tell you. That bad man. That bad woman. <laughs> so I don't worry about that now. I leave all that badness and evil behind. Today I make room for Jesus in my heart. He made haste and he came down. He confessed his sin and repented of his sin. He yielded his life to the Lord. He received the Lord joyfully. Look at what Jesus said. Look at what Jesus is going to tell you today. Verse 9. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is a son of Abraham. This day, salvation comes to your heart. I said this day, salvation comes to your heart. You are taking Jesus back home. You are taking salvation back home. You are taking forgiveness back home. You are taking eternal life back home. Today, somebody there is getting saved today. What is he? What is she? Salvation will go home with you. Point number two now. The demand for his recovering power. The demand for his recovering power. If you are sick, you need healing. You need his recovering power. And he has the power to heal you today. Praise the Lord, you are going to be healed. I said, praise the Lord, you are going to be healed. But you demand. You demand. As I told you, the pastor said he was going to give you a testimony. We went to Namibia. 
and there was a child there. The tongue was out. He wasn't born that way. When she was born, she was normal. But then, after four months, the tongue came out. He couldn't pull back the tongue. And it's a nationwide story that is known. The parents published the picture in the newspapers. They were asking for donors to give them money so that uh, they will go and perform the operation in South Africa. Eventually, the government of Namibia got interested. They promised to finance the operation. They went to Cape Town. And then the experts, the doctors there, they examined the boy, the child. And the child has its at that, that condition. And the experts said they couldn't do anything. Money was available. The government was available. They were willing to help the child. But nothing could be done. And so they came back to Namibia dejected. Eventually we had the crusade. They heard about the crusade. And they came. I didn't know they were there. But God knows they were there. Wherever you are tonight, God knows you are there. I said God knows you are there. Your healing has come. Your miracle has come. He it will not miss you today. And so as we prayed, remember I didn't know the child was there. Somebody carry the child. The tongue sticking out. And uh, as we prayed, there is power in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. While we were still praying, the hand of the Almighty God came, touched that tongue. That tongue went inside, and the child closed them out. Miracle. Somebody shout, Miracle. Because the parents demanded the demand of his recovery power. You will recover tonight. Am I talking to somebody? You will recover tonight in Jesus' name. But look at look at this, look at this. The demand. I'm looking at Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. It says, and he came to Jericho. Now God, Christ has come to a city specially. And as he went out of Jericho, with his disciples, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. Have you heard of Jesus of Nazareth? He opens the eyes of the blind. He makes the lame to rise up at war. He transforms lives. He makes the deaf to hear. And he don't to speak. And he makes everything marvelously good in his own time. He heard of Jesus. And then he began to cry out aloud. That's the demand. That's the demand. That's the prayer. Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. If you will make a demand today, this is not a long prayer. It's not a complicated prayer. You don't have to go to the dictionary to look for words to use. Very simple, very straightforward. They called him by his name. They called him Jesus. 
Jesus the Savior, Jesus the Healer, Jesus the Deliverer, Jesus the Miracle Worker, Jesus the Mountain Mover, Thou Son of David. Very simple. It's not complicated. Then he said, Have mercy on me. He said, I have no marriage. Have mercy on me. I have no money. Have mercy on me. I have no material thing to give you. Have mercy on me. I have no man. Have mercy on me. I have no medicine. Have mercy on me. Mercy has come today. Am I talking to somebody there? Mercy. Not marriage. Mercy. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And he called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. I come to announce you tonight. I come to declare to you tonight. Be of good cheer. Wipe those tears away. Take that unbelief away. Take the doubt and the sorrow away. Christ has come to heal you. I said Christ has come to give you recovery. And he cast in away his garment. He rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? Look at this, very simple. Prayer is not difficult. Prayer is not difficult. Prayer is not complicated. Prayer does not have to take rolling on the ground. Prayer does not need repetition, repetition, repetition. Once I say you are healed in the name of Jesus, you will not stay there again. Oh, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, help me, help me. All that is not necessary. Today you are healed. Today you are delivered. The Lord said, what do you want me to do it unto you? The blind man said unto him, Lord, make him the Lord of your life. The director of your life. The controller of your life. The master of your life. Surrender your life unto him. That's all you need. My soul, my spirit, my body belongs to the Lord from today. My past, my present, my future belongs to the Lord today. Make him the Lord of your life. Then you belong to him. He will heal you. I said he will heal you. Lord, that I might receive my sight. Verse 52. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. That was the end of the prayer. Demonstration is going to come. Healing is going to come. Deliverance is going to come. Miracle is going to come. Jesus told the man. And Jesus has not changed. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Receive your sight. And immediately he received a sight. And he followed Jesus in the way. The demand brought demonstration. Number one, the desire. Number two, the demand. Number three, tell me. Number three, 
I said, tell me demonstration. Demonstration is going to be demonstrated in your life today. Salvation will be demonstrated. Healing will be demonstrated. And deliverance will be demonstrated. Power demonstrated tonight. Look at the last verse there. Immediately he received the sight. And he followed Jesus in the way. It's coming your way. Salvation coming your way. New life coming your way. Healing coming your way. Deliverance is coming to you. Mark chapter 2. Reading from verse 11. Mark chapter 2 verse 11. Demonstration. I say unto thee. Arise. Are you lying down there? Power is coming. When you hear the prayer. And you hear the final amen. Arise. Arise and take up thy bed. Go thy way. Into thy house. Or in uh, Lesotho. Somebody had had cancer for four years. As we mentioned the name of Jesus. Cancer dried up. Your cancer will dry up. Your sickness will dry up. We were in uh, Zambia. Somebody had hunchback. You know what they call hunchback? Came to that meeting with hunchback. And she was saying, oh God, if a hunchback is going to remain there, help me to bear the shame. She was not even praying for the healing. I will mention the name of Jesus. Somebody there, can you mention Jesus for heaven to hear? As we mention the name of Jesus, then we say the final Amen. That hunch back vanished away. It has come to your turn. I didn't hear the clapping of a bull stage. I hear the one of the choir. I want to hear your cutting down there. It has happened. It is going to happen. Then we came back to Nigeria. And then we went to Kogi State. And then we went to Niger State. After that, we went to Nasarawa State. In one of those places, somebody's leg was broken. The plaster was still there. And he came to the crusade with coaches. He could not put that leg down. And then we mentioned the name of Jesus. Like today. I said like today. Immediately, instantaneously. Those broken bones joined together. How do I know that the broken bones joined together? He rose up. He jumped up. He ran with the plaster in the leg. He threw all the sticks away. There is a demonstration going to happen to you today. One mama and daughter came. She had been bedridden for four years. Paralyzed. Paralyzed. Not walking. If she wanted to go to the bathroom, they will carry her. Carry her there. Bring her back. And then we mention the name of Jesus. That name has power. Tonight, today, I said that name has power. And then we said the final amen. The daughter was by the mother. That mama rose up. We were still closing our eyes. 
The daughter was closing our eyes. Mama went out. Began to walk. Not only that. Came to the open field. In front of the congregation. Stretched up her two hands. And started running around. The daughter opened her eyes. Mama, where are you? Mama, where are you? And then she saw Mama running all around the field. And then she came out, and both of them came for testimony. You are coming for your testimony today. Demonstration. Demonstration. Arise. Take up thy bed. Go thy way to thine house. Verse 12. And immediately he arose. When are you going to arise? And immediately he arose. When are your blind eyes going to see? And immediately he arose. When is the power of God going to come to you today? And immediately he arose. And he took up his bed. I remember in one of these crusades, they brought the man in a wheelchair. She sat in the wheelchair. And somebody was pushing her. Very gently, very gently. And then we mentioned the name of Jesus. I can see her now in my mind's eye. She got up. You will get up. Somebody there said you will get up. And then she came behind that wheelchair. And she was pushing the wheelchair by herself. Power. What are you? Power. Today I said, where are you? Shout power. He took up the bed. He went forth before them all. It's so much that they were all amazed. And they glorified God saying, we never saw it on this passion. What you have never seen in your life, you will see. Salvation you have never seen, you will see. Deliverance you have never seen, you will see. Healing you have never seen, you will see. Power you have never seen, you will see. Today, nobody will be a spectator. Nobody will be an onlooker. We will not just be hearing other people. We will hear your testimony. What are you? Testimony. Wonders. Salvation. Forgiveness. Eternal life. Hope of heaven. Miracle. Are you getting it tonight? Amen. I say amen for you. I say amen for you. A confirmation in your life. A demonstration in your life. Joy in your life. Your Savior is very near there. Touching. Receiving. Believing. He'll forgive your sin. He'll take away every sin in your life. He will say, Today, salvation has entered into this heart. What is he? Where is she there? The Lord confirm it in your life. It's about the eyes closed. Koya, you are going to help us with counseling. So, go to the midst of the people. God bless you. All the miracles you need, the Lord will give you right there. The Lord will bless you beyond your expectation. It's bowed and it's closed. Salvation has come. Because the Savior has come. Forgiveness has come. Eternal life has come. Wherever you are, there is a desire. There is a decision. There is a demand. Are you saying, oh Lord, today, I want your salvation. 
wherever you are, you raise up your hand. You want forgiveness? You want eternal life? Just raise up your hand where you are. If you are raising up your hand, you will stand up. I want salvation. I want eternal life. I want the joy of salvation. The grace of salvation. The righteousness of salvation. Eternal life. Eternal life. Eternal life. I want it now. Raise up your hand and stand up wherever you are. Don't let days pass you by. There's a moment of salvation. There's a moment of eternal life. Christ has come to you from heaven. And he wants to give you salvation. Today. 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 Is salvation come to this heart? Raise up your hand and stand up. While you are standing up. Close your eyes there. Close your eyes there and open your mouth. Tell the Lord, Lord, I know I am a sinner. I'm so sinful I cannot touch heaven. I'm so short I cannot touch heaven. I'm so bad I cannot touch heaven. But you'll be the ladder between me and heaven. You'll be the bridge between me and heaven. I come to you, my Christ. Tell him, tell him. I come out of my sin. I turn away from my sin. And I come to Jesus as my Savior. Forgive me, Lord. Save me, Lord. I trust your promise that whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you said today you must abide in my heart. I welcome you. I receive you. I turn away from sin. I turn to you as my savior. Come in. Come in today. Come in to stay. Grant me your salvation. Believe. Accept. He has done it. Raise up that hand as I pray with you. He never rejects the prayer of a seeking sinner. Father, we thank you today. I bless you me for all those who have raised up their hand and they're standing up. In your mercy, in your love, according to your promise that cannot fail, they have come to you. Forgive them, Lord. Save them, Lord. Change their lives. Let your salvation come to every heart now. Joy of salvation. Victory in salvation. Eternal life in salvation. Righteousness with salvation. Be their Lord now. Be their Savior now. Be the master of their lives. Wash away all their old past dirty lives. Cleanse every one of them. Let your witness be in their heart now. Their sins are forgiven. Salvation has come to them. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. We know it is done. They are saved. They are forgiven. They have eternal life now. We bless your name for what you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. amen. Final confirmation. Amen. People yeah. standing, our counselors are there. We we'll call on our state pastor now to direct us in the counseling session. After the counseling, your miracle will be given to you by the Lord himself. Let's go standing, please.
redemptive power is there already. Our leaders join the join the choristers with your converse card. With your converse card. And the barrel is on you already. Don't cancel, don't cancel, just capture their debtors. Name. If they can write, give them. Or you can write also for them. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Demonstration. I said demonstration. What you have had happen in other places. Much more will happen to you. God will favor you tonight. God will bless you tonight. And God will transform your life tonight. Healing. Miracle. Deliverance. Dominion. What is it? It's coming your way there. So you want any miracle, healing or deliverance, you want a particular mountain to move away, you just stand up and raise up your hand. And then we're going to pray after the final amen. You know it is done. You're not just be praying, praying, praying again. That prayer has finalized everything. And when you open your eyes, you'll expect to see what great thing the Lord has done. Your blind eyes will open and see. Your lameness will find a way and go away. Miracle. Somebody help me shout miracle. Just raise up your hand. Lay the other hand on yourself. You're accepting the miracle because the Lord is going to give you now. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you because you're a faithful God. A God that cannot fail. You love your people. You don't want to see anyone suffering. That's why you sent Jesus Christ. He suffered for us. He took our sickness away. By stripes were healed. His name brings us deliverance. His name gives us dominion. I pray for everyone right now. Heal them in Jesus' name. In every part of their body. Wherever there may be sickness. Anywhere there's suffering. Anywhere there's any pain. Lord, touch them. Take it away in Jesus' name. Insanity, madness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Any sweat in your body, cancer in your body, goiter in your body, hunchback in your body, elephantiasis in your body. I speak against that mountain. Come out in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have any other incurable disease, any part of their body, internal, external, manifest your healing power. Let there be recovery right now. Heal them in Jesus' name. Those who are deaf and dumb, I speak the word of deliverance unto you. You are free in Jesus' name. Deaf ears be opened in Jesus' name. Dumb tongues speak out in Jesus' name. I pray for the so blind. Glaucoma vanish away in Jesus' name. Cataract vanish away in Jesus' name. 
that deep nets of sight be cleared now in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are named, paralyzed, having stroke, having broken bones, one leg shorter than the other, any problem in the movement, remove it in Jesus' name. Perform your miracle. Let strength come to their waist. To their spinal cord. Let strength come to their ankle. Every part of them be healed in Jesus' name. Now I pray for everyone everywhere. Anywhere they hear my voice now. Jesus, by your name and power, by your anointing and authority, heal everyone in Jesus' name. To the left, to the right, to the back, everywhere, to the front, to the middle. Healing in Jesus' name. Miracle in Jesus' name. Mountains move away in Jesus' name. Confirmation. Demonstration. In every place. On every one. Do it, Lord. We thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name I pray. It is done. It is done. Check up yourself there and just praise the Lord for what the Lord has done. It's done already. Do what you couldn't do before. Your miracle is right there. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I want to thank God for what What's your he name? did. My name is Oyewusi Fiolua. I want to thank God for what he did in my life. I had an accident last year. My fem my laps got broken. I did a surgery. This day again, I, I did another surgery. I've been trying to walk some distance because um, what the doctor told me to try and do some exercise but I don't have the strength to even move from my room to another person's room. So um, a friend of mine um, was coming for the crusade. I just said, instead of me sitting at home, let me just follow her. So during the program, during the miracle service today, I had um, a, a, a strength within for me that I could just move from my chest to the another chair, I was like, it's just the normal feeling that I will get disappointed again, that I should not move. So I moved another some steps again, I moved some steps again, I moved some steps again till I get there without this crutch. I thank God, I appreciate his holy name. Praise the Lord. When did you have the accident? Where did you have the accident? I had the accident last year. Last year? Last year, January. And you were operated twice? Yes, I was the president. Praise the Lord! The famous bone was broken because of the accident she had two years ago but as the man of god prayed he she had a movement in her body and a power came upon her suddenly and she started moving 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 without using the stick you can see her right now praise the lord my name is Vesgal Akule Sodik and i was when when i was born when i was two years of age one of my leg is longer than the other but when the father of the lord is praying i i just receive it it changed my in my leg and now my two legs are now straight now just, how old are you uh, how old are you i'm i'm 19, 19 19 years which of the leg is shorter the, uh, the left one you can see him now this is evident you don't need anything you can see it now left leg was shorter than the right leg since he, she was born 19 years ago, but now, as the man of God prayed, the power of the Lord struck the left leg, and the, the leg grew, and it was it is now together. Praise the Lord! Let's clap Thank for God. Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm so happy to give this testimony because 
It has been for a long time that I've been battling with this problem. I have went to hospital What's your name? for this. My name is Joshua. Joshua Daudu. I live in Anambra State. So, uh, there is a problem. I was just noted that there is, I'm having some pains in my stomach. So I decided to go to hospital. Then I went to hospital. On getting there, they carried out some tests. They said that there is a stone in my stomach. I, I don't know the meaning of it. I just believe in God. They said they are going to carry out an operation. And the operation will take a lot of money. Though I did not have the money, but I believe in God. Then I come down to Ogun State. I have already reached a month that I come here. On getting to this place, I started going to deeper life because I was thirsty. I am thirsty to serve God. Then they told me about this program. I don't want to come because of some certain condition, but uh, the spirit asked me to come. Then I made it. On getting to this place, when the program is going on, I give all of my spirit and I know that God is going to do something in my life. When we have a break, the thing come up, it was disturbing me. I went and I bought some certain things to eat. After eating it, the thing continued. Getting to the place, I sat down on my seat. When the prayer is going on, I closed my eyes, expecting what God will do for me. All of a sudden, from my head to my toe, my body slack. Then, in my stomach now, I am 100% free. I am 100% free. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The next testifier. Praise the Lord. Ibarma koko do bayi. Ki lo ruko yin? Oruko mi ni Gabriel Oruwa. Ko lati wa? O wa lati ni ijabu ife. Ma so rin. So I saw him. Lati me operation Praise was operated upon in, uh, in May this year, and after the operation, he couldn't walk again. He was just messing up the bed. She, he would sleep there. He couldn't go anywhere. But he was and you could see him standing, the man that cannot stand since he's been operated upon since May. Praise the Lord! 